Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex, and today we're taking a look at The Last Friend on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I've been looking forward to this one, a lane-based beat-em-up combined with tower defense, but how do these genres come together? Well, hit subscribe, but join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. The story then it focuses on a man named Alpha. His mission save all of the world's dugs and immediately I was sold. I am a dug guy for sure personally, but think here less John Wick murderous rampage in its delivery and more cartoon like. In fact, a few of the dugs in here they have the ability to talk. The world here though post-apocalyptic and something weird is happening, the dugs they are disappearing. You and a trusty sidekick you are out to get them back by beating down on a number of different gangs to get to who is basically at the bottom of all of this. It's good fun honestly, it's got quite a bit more dialogue than I anticipated and I really enjoyed its way of pushing us through the world. Gameplay then, and as I said at the opening of this one, it's a beat em up with tower defense mechanics. The core idea is simple, you will be traveling in an RV, and at the beginning of each stage, this will be parked on the left hand side of the screen. You need to protect this RV so you can continue this journey across the post apocalyptic like landscape. The controls are simple for combat, we have the ability to block as well as a light and heavy attack, but with progression you will unlock the ability to grab, throw and use specials thanks to what is a handy special meter underneath your health bar. These specials they include a dash attack, uppercut, stump and even a parry. From there though the combat it starts at 3 lanes, but it will quickly evolve to 5 lanes and enemies in waves they will be charging towards you. The variety in the enemies then it's decent not only visually but they each pack different attack patterns that you need to counter. Think those that simply charge towards you, those that mutate, others might throw grenades or come equipped with shields. There's naturally a lot of repetition but that is understandable. This is a game where the idea is to master your opponent's next move to succeed. You'll even be facing off in fact against boss moments and these are perhaps the game's toughest challenges as they don't simply repeat and it also drops the RV idea, it's simply a battle to deplete their health bar, but some in the latter game they really know how to cause, you know, maximum damage. Alongside the beat em up action then expect to find the tower defense elements and the dogs. So with each stage comes a new dog to save, that is a new potential partner to buddy up with. They not only add new skills or tower systems, but even you can rename them, which is a simple but welcome a touch. These dogs though they start simple enough, think a gun turret to open up, but quickly you'll gain everything from water cannons that slow down enemies to electrocution and support actions. Basically there's a huge selection on offer. Dogs can also then add buffers to Alpha R leader, so the game's challenge, it's not just facing down enemies here, but anticipating what's coming and then building a squad around it. That squad, it starts off at around 4 or 5 dogs, but as you progress you will open up new slots. Some buffers though, they include a super strength, increased health, temporary shields, water when you stump, and again it's a pretty sizable list. This all then ties in perfectly to the game's built-in free star challenges, that's linked to each stage, it asks you to achieve specific goals. For me I'd finish a level, maybe see where it went wrong, and then reorganise my squad, it's almost got an air of just one more go to it all. Building though all of those turrets, it is not a free process, you'll actually need to defeat foes and then collect up the cogs they drop. You know building then though, when it comes to actually implementing it, it's a simple quick selection wheel, it's attached to the left trigger and there's a handy grid that pops up on the screen just to kind of show you that placement. Where things get really interesting though along the way the world map can be faced in a you know linear process to that end goal but there's multiple side paths that pack additional new dugs. You can even visit a character that will level up their abilities and you have a campsite where you can actually improve the stats of your equipment. Three levels each though for each of the different towers and these will cost dog bones. These are also going to be dropped by enemies or rewarded to you for victory. 
That actually leads to my first issue with the last friend though, the difficulty once you get a few unlocks under your belt simply overpowers you and with no difficulty options, this game is a little on the easy side. Keeping enemies away from your RV for example it is a breeze for I'd say 95% of the game until at least a very sudden spike towards those last few levels. In fact because of this I actually gave up on experimenting with new dogs and simply used multiple rows of my original turret because that thing would just destroy anything that moved at its maximum level. I also did find towards the end game the last friend it tries to add a dash of variety with its boss encounters but overall it is somewhat repetitive. I think the combination of a near non-existent difficulty curve paired with you know overpowered weapons led me to a place where there was really no kind of I guess tension. Fortunately though that end game difficulty the last few levels definitely kind of reared its head and I was infested again. Overall look for gameplay I had fun with it still but I can see where a few areas of you know polish and balancing could have taken it from good gameplay to absolutely fantastic gameplay. Graphically then I liked what it had to offer, the characters and dugs in particular look great, there's some fun designs for the tower elements and the locations, you, you know you'll go over this overworld map which consistently switches up the location, when you're kind of feeling like I'm getting a little burnt out on this enemy type, a new gang of sorts will come along swiftly. Additionally the menus, the building is intuitive and works really well giving you everything you need to make quick fire decisions and they're extremely clean to look at. The only complaint visually really, following this epic opening cutscene the game really relies on dialogue boxes and still a character portraits for that story and I wish they'd gone maybe a little more over the top. I'm sure an animator in a world of warring dogs they could have had an absolute blast with it. Audio then and again look it's decent enough there's no voice acting first off which I think could have been a fun addition but otherwise we have some solid battle effects, each enemy comes with something unique and the dogs they bark constantly in the background which I appreciated but my actual in real life dog definitely didn't. The music then is what I would describe as playerful, it's over the top, it's often fast paced, it works as a support to the on screen action, wouldn't be listening to it offline though. The last friend then it's refreshing in the sense like it's a new IP with a lot of character in its world design and of course it's cast and it's taking a risk trying something new beat em up meets tower defense. It's even got quite a bit of depth thanks to its leveling system and squad of management. The brawler action as well it's simple but they continue to evolve it throughout so you're very much witnessing alpha becoming stronger and stronger. The issues though, the balance, it's a little off, it's just too easy for too long, the weapons can be leveraged to overpower you pretty early in the game, meaning you can simply relax rather than feeling the tension. And then finally the games, you know, it has replayability when you want to chase those three stars and maybe experiment, but once it's all wrapped up, you know, 100%, maybe I'd say 7 or 8 hours, there's little reason to come back. Still for me like a good 7 out of 10 from me today, I can't name another title on the Switch quite like it and I hope they continue to develop the idea with a follow up, I love the characters, the world, it's just the gameplay itself that needs a few tweaks. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it helps more than you know so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.